Being lost is already bad as it is, but being lost in the woods, especially at night, sounds like an outright nightmare. These stories are surely going to freak you out, as they detail some pretty creepy events that have happened while being lost in the woods. If you have a story you would like to share in a future video, be sure to submit that at swampwiller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I would love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that keep this channel going. Now, without further ado, let's get in to these stories. I've been living in Louisiana my entire life. For the purposes of my safety, I'll only state the state I live in. I like to go camping quite a bit, and when I do, I usually bring my friends with me. I'm a 33-year-old female, but my story takes place when I was just 22. I was off for the summer from college and I decided I wanted to go camping. As I said before, I usually take my friends with me, but this summer, they all had plans and most of them were going out of state to see friends, family, and loved ones. I'm the type of person who really loves a good adventure. And while my friends being unable to go with me was a bit of a bummer, I wasn't about it to let me hold back from camping. So in June, I decided I'd go camping. I wanted somewhere somewhat new to me, and I wanted to wander off the beaten path. I know this can be dangerous, but at the time, my thought was what's the sense of going on an adventure if I can't do a little exploring? It wasn't the first time I'd done something like this. But the key difference this time was, I didn't have any friends with me. This was the first and last time I'd ever make that mistake. I went to a fairly popular camping ground a few towns away from where I live. I was geared up and excited for whatever adventures may come my way. For the first while I explored around potential camping spots, and when I got the chance I snuck off into the woods. The thing about this campsite is, like any site, there are areas that they recommend you to camp in, or in some cases, tell you to camp. These are usually the areas a lot of tourists or first-time campers might stay. Then there are the areas you are recommended to stay out of or told straight up not to camp in. I ignored the warning signs and went off the trail with my gear in tow. I had food and plenty of water and thought I'd be fine while out there. I told my family I'd be camping over the weekend, but I never actually told them where I'd be. I know, this was stupid. The thrill seeker I was, I didn't think much of it at the time. To me, it was just another way for the trip to be more exciting. I wandered for hours. Upon first leaving the beaten path, it was about 1.30 in the afternoon. When I finally decided to set up camp for the night, in a clearing I had found, it was around 7.30 in the evening. I set up camp, ate and chilled alone. The only sounds accompanying me were the sounds of birds and other animals and the slight breeze blowing through the trees. I felt so relaxed even though I was aware I didn't know where I was. I didn't think this as a problem at the time as I'd been marking trees along my walk so I knew how to get back if need be. Anyways, as night was drawing closer, I decided to set up my tent and once dark came, I headed into my tent for the night. At least that was the plan. I figured I'd get up early and maybe explore for another day, staying one more night before heading back. I'd mark my way as I did and figured I'd have no problems getting home after that. Sadly, this wasn't how things would go at all. I crashed pretty quickly and was sleeping soundly until I heard something or someone approaching. It was the sound of snapping twigs, and then the sound of talking that initially woke me up. This didn't initially bother me, as I thought maybe someone had seen my markers and wandered out there themselves to explore. I carried a big knife on me at all times as well, and was fully prepared to use it if need be. The thing that first bothered me was the fact that I heard two men. It wasn't that they were men that bothered me. It was that some of what I was hearing coming from them. There was a discussion about the pieces of rope on the trees. 
This led them to talking about how someone might be out there. My first thought was, I'm an idiot. This could be game and fish wardens, or some form of law enforcement, who followed my markers right to me, and I was potentially going to be fined for being out here where I shouldn't be and ignoring all the signs with warnings. Looking back on it, I wish it had been some form of law enforcement or animal protection. The conversation took a dark turn quite quickly as one of these men laughed and talked about how they shouldn't worry about anyone coming out this way, as he'd been cutting the rope off the trees as they followed it. It was at this point, I thought I am definitely an idiot, as these clearly aren't law enforcement officers, and the way they were laughing and talking made it sound as like they weren't coming with good intentions. Also, without my markers, I'm gonna be completely lost. Being lost was something I still believed I could probably handle, but approaching my campsite wasn't something I was sure of. I was too afraid to move and leave my tent as I could hear them getting close enough to that any movement would have given me away. It wasn't long before I heard them just outside my tent. They were laughing and talking to one another about my tent. They kept asking each other if they thought someone was sleeping in the tent. I heard one of them say, I hope so. They drew a gun. I couldn't see these guys very well, but I was terrified at this moment. I sat there frozen, waiting to see what they did next and praying that they didn't try anything. I remember thinking I was dumb to think this was a good idea. I pulled out my knife and gripped it slowly as one of the men slowly approached my tent. He began unzipping it, and as he did, both men laughed at one another. The second he finished unzipping the tent, I jumped forward and stuck my knife into the man unzipping the tent. He screamed, and I sprinted away as fast as I could, looking back as I heard one of their guns go off. I remember hearing one of them call me something vile as the other man began to give chase. I think I surprised them, as having stabbed one of them, he let me free in the moment, so the only way that I got out was because of that. I remember hearing the man screaming about how when he found me he was going to change my attitude. He also mentioned how he and his buddy would teach me some manners. This obviously terrified me as I ran, as I had a fair idea of what they probably meant by that. I usually keep my ID and anything like that on me, so I felt relief in the fact that I had these things on me as I ran. I couldn't help but continue running, and I tried to fight thoughts in my mind that told me I could wind up never being seen again if I so much as slowed down. The most horrific part of this was thinking that I'd never see my friends and family again and that if these two guys caught me, who knows what state my body would be found in if I was ever found at all. The horrific potentials that ran through my mind, coupled with the adrenaline running through me, were enough to keep me sprinting for far longer than I would have been able to. Eventually, however, I needed to stop and breathe. It was dark and I was lost. I no longer had my markers to guide me, and in these woods, everything looked the same. I listened closely for sounds of the two men, but I heard nothing. I began to think I may have outrun them, and that brought me some solace. They likely knew I hadn't gotten a real look at neither of them, so I hoped that they would just give up and go away. That was a great thought but I wasn't entirely sure if that was the case, and now I was out in the middle of the woods, lost, with no food or water to speak of. I walked for much of the night and eventually I found an area where I tried to drag some brush and kind of block myself from sight in a makeshift shelter. I walked for much of the night and eventually I found an area where I tried to drag some brush and kind of block myself from sight in a makeshift shelter. I hoped if the two men happened around the area, they wouldn't find me. I was too tired and exhausted at this point, and I crashed. I woke up the next morning to the sound of footsteps. I freaked out and was too scared to move. My first thought was that the two guys had caught up with me, and I was probably going to die after something horrible was done to me. As it turns out though, it was law enforcement. I had peeked out only to see someone in a game and fish outfit looking at me. I guess I wandered much closer to the main camping area than I had realized. I consider this extremely lucky, and I thank God every day that I was able to find a way, however haphazardly, back to the main campground. 
The guy approached me and told me he had heard someone wandering around the area while patrolling and decided to check it out. He talked to me for a bit about not wandering off the main campgrounds and then he asked me what was going on. I explained everything to him and he called law enforcement. I talked to them and they did a search of the woods. They found my campsite but they never found the men who tried assaulting me. I told them I stabbed one of them and he probably still had my knife. I'm guessing they covered their tracks pretty thoroughly after that. I'm not sure if they ever got the men but I'm sharing my story to say you should never go camping alone unless you are fully prepared in every possible way. Even then, you should be aware of where you are going, where you are, and also let someone know where you'll be. I'm grateful I survived my encounter and have never gone camping alone since. I learn from my mistakes and I only go camping now with my friends and usually we keep to areas where we can easily be found. Whoever those two men were, I hope they are caught. You should always be wary of your surroundings and you should always be safe while camping. I've lived in Alabama much of my life, and if you know anything about Alabama, it is that there are woods everywhere. Much of my days and nights of my youth were enjoyed wandering around near aimlessly playing war, tag, hide and seek, and other games. There are a few feelings as great as spending your days in the woods. The best time, in my opinion, was during the summer. You're out of school and just hanging with all your cousins and family while the adults usually locked you out of the house until evening, when they would just holler at you from the home, wash up, and get ready to go for dinner. As an adult, I roam the woods mostly during hunting season, and while it's always a good and freeing time away from work and stress of the everyday grind, there will never be anything quite like those summers in the woods. Well, the exception being summer of 2003. I was 14 at the time, and summer vacation was nearing its end. On the day in question, we had a big family get-together. The occasion wasn't anything specific or special. It was just a good time hanging with the family. It's just something that families do quite often out here in the country. Anyway, it was me, my cousins, who we will call Darnell, Dennis, Jim, Katie, and Leanne. We got up really early, and all got together. At about 8 or 9 in the morning, the adults told us it was time to go out and play. When I was younger, I laughed at this because the adults would stay inside in a nice AC while we hung out in the elements. Mind you, we always had water on hand and lemonade among other things, but as an adult and a father now myself, I understand it. I look back on those days as some of the best times of my youth, and I'm grateful to my family for giving us that sort of freedom. Anyway. We started the day playing some football in the yard and throwing sticks to our grandparents' dog, Wendy. She was a golden retriever and was fairly large at that. Now, the first odd thing of that morning was Wendy herself. We had been outside for maybe an hour or so, not entirely sure because we didn't really keep track of time until we were called in for dinner. When we decided it was time to go explore the woods. Wendy would always come with us and she'd usually be following one or more of us. This time, however, she stopped at the edge of the woods. She just stared and when we tried to prod her along, she just refused to go any further. She would growl and eventually she whimpered and went back onto the back porch to relax in the shade. I know what you're thinking. We probably should have taken this as a sign and stayed in the yard that day. You are right. We probably should have done just that. Still, as a group of teenagers, we found this exciting and it only heightened the idea of fun in the woods. Also, while it was strange and out of place, it wasn't something I felt I needed to worry about too much as we usually carried knives and such for protection. So the day was going well, and one odd occurrence aside and after exploring the woods for a bit, we decided to play some hide and seek. We did this for a few rounds before it was my turn to seek. I closed my eyes and counted to 100. Yeah, we were pretty extreme about our count as we wanted a real amount of time to be able to hide. I finally finished counting when I noticed someone appears to be trying to hide in some bushes in the distance. I laugh and start mocking them and saying things like, 
Where are you guys? How will I ever find you? Then I get to the bushes in question, and laughingly tell whoever's in the bushes to come out, as I had spotted them immediately. I stand there quietly for a bit, and finally I start kicking around impatiently in the bushes themselves. No response. I then grab a nearby small branch, break the edges off, and start poking around. I start to get a little annoyed and say whichever one of you is in these bushes needs to come out. I tell them I saw them, and they can't cheat. That's when I realize there isn't anyone there. So calming down for a bit, I think I may have just been seeing things or maybe it was an animal I mistook for one of my cousins. I look up and see some rustling a bit all a ways ahead of me. I think great, I'll catch one of my cousins trying to switch spots. I rush forward and into the area with a lot of plant life. I'm talking larger plant life. The plants were roughly knee height and I'm no longer seeing anyone. After searching for a bit longer I begin to feel myself getting a little annoyed. I think to myself, I swear something was there. A few moments go by when I hear a light snickering that sounded like my cousin Katie from deeper in the woods. I start to cheer up a bit and run deeper into the woods figuring they are all just messing with me. I think to myself, it's alright, I'll just play along. I then continue to follow the snickering further. It is at this point I realize I'm not familiar with the area I'm in. I can still hear the snickering, which now goes into full-on laughter. It is now that I am positive it's Katie. So, a smile on my face and a newfound confidence within, I press forward. It isn't until walking for some time that I begin to realize the laughter is keeping maintaining a specific distance from me. At first, I think it's just Katie running or something, but the thing is, I haven't seen anyone moving forward or any leaves rustling. I've only continuously heard this laugh and followed the sound. I felt this was strange, and I was beginning to grow tired from following what I believed was Katie. Being in an unfamiliar area of the woods, I finally gave up and said, Alright Katie, I know it's you, you can come out now, you win, I can't find you. I listened closely, and the laughter stopped. I don't hear anything outside of the birds chirping. Huh, that's strange, I think to myself. I decided to continue a bit further in the direction I had originally heard the laughter coming from, but I found no one. The only sign of life was nature. After a few more minutes of searching, I give up. Deciding that Katie probably knew where she was going, even if I didn't, and she probably headed back by now. It is as I am walking around that I heard a loud shriek and I bolt in the direction of the sound, scared my cousin might be in trouble. I reach a clearing and realize no one is there. I'm starting to feel fear creep up on me. I'm looking around and, and I notice I'm not familiar at all with where I'm at. My family has a property line that they clearly mark and always tell us to never go beyond, and it's at this point I'm beginning to think I may have ignored the usual boundary line in my haste to find Katie. It isn't like it is marked off by a fence as the woods are way too deep. There are usually posts with yellow tape on them and often the private property signs. Confused, I looked around some more. As I look around, my blood begins to run cold as behind me I hear the most disturbing thing I have ever heard in my entire life. The best way I can describe it, and it won't do justice by the way, is a blood-curdling scream. I don't mean like a normal one either. I mean, it sounded like a mix of a woman and something demonic screaming. I'm not saying it was a demon. I'm saying the best way I could describe it was a mix between a grown woman and a demon if they screamed at the same time. This voice, or whatever it was, sounded like someone was being murdered or about to do something horrific and murderous to someone else. I freaked out and bolted forward. As I did this I could hear the scream again. It was louder this time and it followed me. My heart was racing and I was beginning to feel lightheaded as I'm heavier set and not very good at sprints or marathons. Still, the adrenaline in me is saying to keep running and don't stop, and so I do just that for as long as I can. I reach another clearing and realize I'm completely lost at this point, but I'm too scared to stop, so I lightly jog and half walk forward. 
I think to myself that I'm going to die out here if I don't keep moving. And so, no matter what, I refuse to completely stop. I look behind me every now and again, and as I'm walking and trying to catch my breath, it is a few minutes later that I think I'm safe, and I finally stop. I start thinking to myself, Great, I'm lost. It's hot, and I don't have any water on hand. I'm sweating, I'm lost, and the sun is beginning to lower in the sky. It isn't dark yet. During the summer, it takes a bit longer to get dark, but I realize it probably won't be long before my family will be calling us in for dinner. It isn't till later I realize how much time I was out here running for, but now I'm lost and have no idea where I am. So, not sure where to go, I figure I'll keep walking forward as I'll likely eventually hit a dirt road and maybe regain my bearings from there. The woods aren't going to go on forever, I tell myself, to try to keep myself calm. I stop to breathe for a second and it isn't long before I heard that shrill, terrifying scream again. It's behind me and it sounds fairly close. Freaked out and not even thinking I bolt forward, and at this point I'm crying as I run. I can't hold my tears in or pretend not to be afraid anymore. I'm scared out of my freaking mind and just rushing through the trees and bushes as fast as I can with branches slapping my face. I don't care what is ahead, as long as whatever is behind me doesn't catch up. I run for what feels like hours, but I'm sure it was only maybe a half hour at most. I hear movement, and I feel like my heart is about to explode as I hear another scream and I force myself forward again. Terrified, I keep running until I suddenly reach a drop off. It isn't very high, but it appears to be a small hill that is steep enough that if I fall face first, I might bounce and hit the bottom and break my neck. At first, I scramble up so quickly that I fall down again. Then I stand up more slowly, unable to really run anymore or barely stand. It is now I realize the small hill I fell down from dropped me into a ditch, but the world before me is no longer wooded. I mean, there are woods ahead if I go up another embankment, but between that and the ditch I'm in is a dirt road. I've never in my entire life been so happy to see a dirt road or any sign of civilization. I climb out of the ditch and sit for a second on the side of the road. I don't see anyone following me and no one is driving on the road at the moment. Once I've had a few moments to relax, I look around and get my bearings again. I walk down the road till I hit a gas station I recognize. I go in and buy myself some water. It is after that that I head back home. I get home late and my family is standing around looking concerned. I explain to them I missed the boundary and accidentally wandered off our property line and after a big hug, I was in for a bit of a scolding. I told my family everything. I knew I'd sound crazy, but I told them anyway. They thought maybe I had a bit of a breakdown when I realized I was lost and maybe I'd imagined things, but that scream was too real, and whatever was out there lured me out into an unfamiliar part of the woods. I'm not sure what it was or who it was or why, but I'm grateful it never caught up to me. We were restricted to the yard for the rest of the summer, but we did eventually go out into the woods again. I was scraped up and needed to be rehydrated and stuff, but I was okay. Still, I'll never forget that summer, and I'll never forget that day. My story takes place out in the woods of Oregon. My first name is Greg and I love all things natural. I didn't do much camping or exploring the woods when I was younger. No. My love for camping started at around 19 when I went on my first camping trip. The funny thing about it is that I'm originally from Portland, Oregon. Yes, I'm a city boy as most country people call it. You wouldn't know this now as I live on a more rural area and I go camping all the time. As I spoke earlier of my first camping trip, you should know that's what this story is about. My first time camping was wondrous, strange, and somewhat an eerie experience. It being my first time, I went with my buddy who I will call Donnie. This obviously isn't his real name, but while I don't mind my identity being someone out there, I'll keep his anonymous for privacy and safety reasons. Anyway, we went camping and, full disclosure, we did smoke some good weed. 
My buddy and I, high out of our minds, thought it'd be a good idea to leave our campsite and just wander off into the woods. You gotta understand, we were tripping hard. Donnie kept telling me about this woman he was hearing singing in the woods. I laughed and told him he was toasted, but I followed him anyway, partly out of want for his safety and partly out of curiosity. We wandered for a few hours, oblivious to how deep we were really going, all in search of this elusive and beautiful voice Donnie swore he had heard. Now, I'm not sure if it was the influence of the weed we were smoking, this is a very real possibility, or if I really heard voices, but after a time, I began to actually hear this woman he claimed was singing. Even stranger, I heard multiple women's voices. I am fairly certain, but still not entirely certain that everything we heard and the things we saw were because of the drugs. You'll understand what I mean shortly. So anyway, we are following the voices until we hit a spot where I'm 99.9% .9 sure I can see a group of women dancing without clothing in the middle of the woods. I rub my eyes and smack Donnie for a second. It's about the time he is eyeing me with anger and seems to be questioning my reasoning for smacking him, that I ask him if he is seeing what I'm seeing. Donnie looks ahead and nods before saying, Naked babes in the woods. Yeah, I'm seeing it. I remember letting out a huge burst of laughter and watching as they stopped singing and dancing and looked over at us. Figuring we were caught and just being super horny, I step out with my arms raised and say, I'm lost. It's funny, because later Donnie would tell me how he thought it was weird, that I didn't run or anything, and that I had just had this shamelessly happy sound in my voice as I approached them. Donnie had, of course, followed me soon after, realizing we were caught either way. We spent a great amount of time after that talking and singing and dancing in the woods with these beautiful women. The last thing I remember before passing out was laying on the ground with one of the women who kissed me, and then everything after that was a blur. When we awoke hours later we were naked and there was no one around. There was a dead campfire where I remember the woman had been dancing, but part of me thought I probably imagined most of that. At least, I thought that until I put my clothes back on and found something in my pocket. It was a necklace with a heart-shaped stone on it. It has a sharp point where the heart tips at the bottom. I didn't own anything like this, and it's the only thing that has led me to question if that crazy night in the woods was real after all. We spent another day collecting ourselves and finding our way out of the woods. When we finally found a way out, we hit a highway and eventually asked someone for a ride back to the campgrounds themselves. We spent a couple of days out in the wilderness and I felt a profound closeness to nature ever since that camping trip. I know my story isn't scary and was pretty funny more than anything, and I realized we were tripping hard on weed and drugs, but I can't help but be thankful for that couple of days. I'm not entirely sure if everything was the weed or not, but it has altered my life since. I wound up moving out to a more rural area, and I've been camping many times since. I'm still good friends with Donnie, and I'm grateful that although we got high and lost in the woods, it all turned out to be for the better ultimately. So yeah. I wouldn't recommend wandering into the woods high, but in my case, it brought me closer to nature and completely changed my life as a result. My story isn't a long one, but it occurred when I was 21. I went camping with my dad, and this was going to be the final time we went camping before I went off to college again. We live in Virginia, and it's a beautiful state. The events that led to the story were normal enough. We went camping like we always had, and we even went to the same area to camp. It was around the third night that things get weird. My dad and I are always packing, as you never know who or what you may run into while camping out in the woods. Most of the time, you have nothing to fear, but it's better to be safe than sorry when it comes to protection out in the middle of nowhere. I had fallen asleep rather quickly on the third night when my dad had woke me up and told me to have my gun on me. My dad wasn't spooked easily, so I knew something was up. I came out of my tent, rifle in hand, and sat there, 
listening with my dad to the sound of loud snarling. This didn't sound like any animal we'd ever heard though, and it wasn't long before we saw something huge on the edge of the tree line. It was a massive shadow that was at least 10 feet tall and it had red eyes. I've never seen anything like this, and the second it moved forward my dad and I fired our rifles. My dad hit this thing square between the eyes and I fired off around to its chest. But it kept walking forward. Freaked out, we abandoned camp and ran. It didn't take us long to get turned around as we didn't pay much mind to where we were running at that moment. After what felt like an eternity, we stopped to catch our breath. We stuck close to another as we heard someone speak from far away. This thing had my dad's voice. The very plain problem with that is my dad is right next to me and this voice was coming from further away. It wasn't more than another minute when we saw the figure again. We fired off a few more rounds and I'm sure we hit it several times. It didn't stop moving and so we continued running. We only stopped long enough to catch our breath and even then we made a point to keep walking and moving. We continued doing this until morning came. At that point we were completely lost and figured we'd take some time to rest after all of that. We tried to find our way again. It wasn't long before we crashed. We awoke in the evening to the sound of large trees shifting. Freaked out, we jumped up and continued. We kept running through the woods, like madmen. There are a few things as scary as being lost in the woods, but being pursued by something you've shot several times is something I'd say is scarier. By the time night fell, we made the decision that we shouldn't sleep unless we absolutely need to. If that were the case, we would take sleeps and shifts. That never happened though, as this thing was soon upon us again. Strangely this time, it spoke in my mother's voice. The problem being, my mom had passed away three years prior in a car accident. I remember being sad and angry as we continued running. All through the night, no matter how fast we ran or how far we went, the moment we stopped this thing was there. It was by the next morning that we were able to rest once again. It was around now we realized this thing didn't seem to appear during the day. We took a couple of hours to get some rest and decided we would do all we could to get out of these woods before dark. We spent much of that afternoon just pressing forward and praying to see civilization again. We did eventually find our way out and spent the night in a motel that night. The next day, we would make the walk back to our truck and left. I'm not sure what that thing was, and to this day, I pray I never find the answer to that question. I have never gone camping since. I love camping and hiking. I'm a 40 year old male and my story takes place a couple of years ago. I'm someone who is highly well versed in camping and hiking, and so the following story is the only time I've ever found myself lost in my entire life. You will understand the circumstances as to how I wound up lost soon enough, and just how strange they were. There are plenty of places to hike and camp in Northern California. Despite what tourist ads would have you believe, there is still plenty of woods in nature in California. The ads are generally catered to SoCal and not we in the north, but that's another story entirely. Anyway, I had a week off work for vacation and I wanted to spend those doing my favorite thing, hiking and exploring our great woods in this lovely state. I got my things together and left super early to a campground about 100 miles from where I live. I am familiar with the area, and the moment I got there, I got my stuff and began my hike. I started my job on many hiking trails, knowing this particular trail led into the woods. Quite often, I'd then break from the path, and I had a nice little area off the beaten path that I was very familiar with. This area tended to have far fewer hikers and campers, and while not necessarily on the main pass, there was no rule that said I had to stay on the beaten path. When the opportunity arose, I broke from the path, 
haven't purposely waited till no one was around as it's much more exciting to be alone in the woods. And I honestly didn't want my hidden secret to be exposed by random passerbys. I was quite sure my path had been trotted by those better versed within the area. But there's a certain pride to those of us who hike and camp often to take in blazing our own trails and finding our own secrets within the woods and hiking trails. Now this is where things begin to take a turn for the strange. I have walked this area quite often, and I always make a point to camp out once I get deep enough that I'm sure I'm away from the trails. I plan to spend at least a good 3-4 to four days of my vacation out here camping, so I brought plenty of supplies. Once I arrived at the spot I usually camped, I stopped and set up my tent and got some food and water in me. I always prepare in case something goes wrong, and so I had more than enough food and water to survive a couple of weeks at least, to be safe. The night was peaceful, and I fell asleep fast to the sound of nature all around me. There is nothing more relaxing than the feeling of being alone in nature. I awoke the next morning, packed my gear up and had some breakfast and continued my hike. It was while I was hiking that I soon heard something I wasn't accustomed to hearing out in the middle of nowhere. I heard crying. The crying appeared to be coming from just up ahead, along the path, but slightly to the right of it. I soon came upon a blue haired woman in yoga pants and a tank top crying on the side of the path. I announced myself and she stopped crying, but kept her hands over her face. I asked if she was okay. The woman claimed she was lost and wasn't sure how to get back. I fell for her and reached a hand out to help her, but as I touched her, she jumped back. The woman, she, she felt ice cold. Still covering her face, she began to cry again. In an attempt to calm the woman, I smiled and assured her it was okay. I explained that she needed to only walk straight back the way I came and that she would be found easily. I told her she'd eventually reach the main trails and could get back on those and head back to her vehicle or home. The woman stopped crying and asked if I was sure. I reassured her with a smile, but she wouldn't bring her hands down from her face. Concerned, I asked if she needed me to go with her, but she said no, she would find her way. She told me thank you, but she still wouldn't show me her face as she ran straight back the way I'd come. I could have called someone to help her, but where I was, I, I don't know, I just didn't know if I would get any reception there. I debated following her, but she had refused my help and I was worried if I followed her that she might think I was dangerous and it might spook her off the path or get me in trouble when I finally made my way back. So, in order to avoid any misunderstandings, I told myself I tried to help the woman by pointing her to the correct area. After a few more hours, I had calmed a bit and thought to myself, I'm sure the woman found her way and before I knew it, I was ready to stop again. I decided to set up camp in an area that looked as though someone had previously camped there. It still had the indentation of a tent, but it was clear whoever had been there had cleaned up and left a while ago. Part of me wondered if it had been the woman that I had come across or another adventuring soul like myself. I soon set up, ate some dinner and settled in for the night. I was awoken in the early hours of the morning to the sound of familiar crying. At first I thought it couldn't be, but checking my watch, I noticed it was 3 in the morning. I pulled out my flashlight. At first, I followed the sobs. A little way up the trail I was shocked to see the same blue haired woman, hands covering her face, crying. I announced myself once again and asked the young woman if she had gotten turned around somehow. She stopped crying and told me she wasn't sure. I specifically remember her saying, it never ends. Perplexed, I tried to calm her by asking if I could offer her some food. I explained to her my camp wasn't too far away and I had more than enough food to spare if she wanted some. The woman asked if I would be so kind to point her home. I told her I wasn't sure what she meant by home but the nearest main trail was many hours away in the opposite direction. I told her she must be hungry, and if she would just come back with me, I could offer her some food. I made sure not to press past this, however, as again, I didn't want any misunderstandings. 
The woman simply shook her head no, and then she'd find her way before heading back the way of my camp. I followed behind and asked if she wanted me to at least walk her back to my camp. She didn't say anything. She just continued walking with her hands over her face, and her fingers open just enough to see ahead of her. We eventually made it back to my camp and I told her she could sleep in my tent if she wanted to, and I'd stay outside and in the morning I'd help her find her way back. The woman entered my tent, hesitantly, and I laid out looking at the stars till I passed out. In the morning I checked my watch to see that it was 9 on the dot. I got up, stretched, and then proceeded to announce myself before slowly opening my tent. I found no one inside my tent. At first I was thrown off, but eventually I realized she probably left and didn't want to disturb me, or she waited till I fell asleep and maybe left being she didn't really know me. I made a big breakfast that morning, and figuring there wasn't much I could do, I packed up and decided I'd head back. It was when packing up that I realized the strangeness of my situation. I hadn't paid it any mind the previous night because in the dark, I hadn't noticed it. That said, at the first camping spot I usually park it, there is a very distinct tree with a carving of a heart and the initials E and L in it. This tree has a very distinct shape as well, as the way the branches go out it makes it look like a horse is on two legs and jumping back. It's the best way I can describe it. It was only now, in broad daylight, that I noticed these things. I am positive that I had walked for hours in a straight line toward my next camping spot. I hadn't made any weird turns or wandered off where I normally would be. Now, if my eyes were to be believed, I had somehow looped back to my camping spot. I was thrown enough by this that I decided to head back the way I had come in the hopes of hitting the main trail again. Well, minutes turned to hours, before I knew it, I needed to stop. I found the nearest clearing and decided to set up my camp. Had I gotten turned around somehow? That was something that rang in my head, but I was in disbelief as I knew there was no way I'd get turned around. I was about to set things up and make some dinner when I heard the sound of crying once more. It was just up ahead, and on my way back, I slowly and cautiously walked toward the sound of crying, and there I found the woman crying hands covering her face, next to a tree. The moment I came into the open, I noticed she stopped crying. I shakily said, hello? And I asked if I could help her. I told her I felt a little lost myself, but this was the third time our paths had crossed and I wanted to be sure we both found our way home. So, she, if she'd give me a minute, we could go back to my campsite and get things packed up and head toward the main trail. The woman nodded but refused to bring her hands down from her face. I didn't press her as to why, and she followed me back to my camp. I grabbed some jerky and offered her some, but she simply shook her head. So I packed up my camp and walked with her. I tried to go back toward where I believed the main path should be. I spent the rest of the night walking and every now and again I tried to ask her questions about what she was doing out here and where she was from. Eventually I gave up on that and tried small chat. She never responded. It was as the sun was coming up and we had been walking in silence for hours that I noticed the main trail was finally in sight. I smiled and felt relief and told the woman see it was okay. I heard her say thank you and when I turned back to tell her you're welcome, to my shock, no one was there. I started my hike on a Friday and when I arrived back home on a Sunday afternoon I was happy knowing I could spend the rest of my vacation at home. I never found out who that woman was or where she went. The rational part of my mind was that she said thank you and then just left, but that doesn't make sense. I would have heard her leave, right? I also can't explain how I looped back to that same spot when I was first hiking. I don't do drugs and I wasn't on any sort of medication. I'm very well versed in hiking and camping, and I was quite familiar with the location I was hiking. Even if I hadn't been, I went straight the entire time. I still hike in camp today. I have never had a run in like that again and I have been back to that same area and hiking path since. I have never seen the woman, heard any crying and I have never looped again. This is easily the strangest experience of my life and I thank you for allowing me to share it.
Thanks for listening to these scary Lost in the Woods stories. I know personally if I was ever lost in the woods, I don't know how I would handle it. I might just lose myself. Luckily, these people didn't. If you have a story you would like to share in a future video, be sure to submit it at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I would love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that keep this channel going. If you enjoyed these stories, please hit that like button as it helps me out a ton. And if you're new to the channel, why not subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss a new video. I upload them almost every single day. I'll see you guys soon with another creepy video.